amazing the people I talk to who are in the resources industry who are not aware that BHP is undertaking a $1.7 billion mine development right now in West Australia mm. and, and how many people haven't heard of it. Hello and welcome to the Market Bull Podcast. Please note, topics and stocks discussed in this podcast are not financial or investment advice. Thomas Lyne is the incoming Managing Director and CEO at GCX Metals, which is listed on the ASX under code GCX. GCX Metals is an Australian exploration company focused on West Australian discoveries in copper, nickel, platinum and gold. Tom discussed his history in the mining sector and why he ended up taking on this new role at GCX. Now, GCX is acquiring the Dante Nickel Copper Platinum project that is in close proximity to BHP's $1.7 billion mine that many are unaware of. Tom explored why the region is growing, what the next stages are for exploration, and what investors can expect from GCX in the coming months. Here is Thomas Lyon from GCX. So, hello, I'm Ben Kostrich, and welcome to the Market Bull podcast. Joining me on the show today is Tom Lyon, the incoming Managing Director and CEO at GCX Metals, which is listed on the ASX under code GCX. Um, it's uh, an exploration company focused on projects in Australia. And well, yeah, he's going to talk to us a lot about the upcoming and the recent news about one of the new projects in the portfolio. So welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Ben. Good to be here. So talking about your background, we're saying before we started, you're a geologist, uh, I guess, in your previous life. And now as I'm seeing you're sitting nice and suited up, uh, addressing more of the corporate life, but I know you still love to get in the back. And uh, I saw a post on LinkedIn or something the other day of you cooking up in the field, which was fantastic. <laughs> but diving through your history, I mean, what, what, it's, what have you done previously and what's led you to this role now at GCX Metals? Sure. So I started my career as a production geologist. So I was on the tools working in mining, uh, for about seven or eight years. So a lot of geos kind of go from exploration to mining or just stay in exploration the whole time. Uh, but for me, I started in production and then transitioned into brownfields exploration. Exploration was always my passion, but for some reason I ended up in a production role uh, and was really excited to kind of transition out of that. So I moved into resource development and then brownfields exploration and then into pure ex exploration. Mm. So uh, while I was working as senior exploration geologist for a company in South Australia, uh, I started my own company, my own exploration company, just as the sole director and picked up a little bit of exploration ground of my own. And then I didn't really know anybody because mm. I'd just been an employee in a large company, hadn't spent any time in Perth at all in my career. And I kind of just got a credit card and went out flying around Australia, maxed it out, trying to get somebody <laughs> to invest in my company. And uh, that was really what leverage me into you know the corporate exposure mm. uh, because I, I got a deal with Taruga Minerals and vended my company into Taruga uh, via an RTO, a reverse takeover, and came in as the CEO of uh, Taruga, mm. which, I, which I spent just over three years in that role. So that was my first you know exposure to the corporate side of the business. Um, and it was early this year that I left Taruga and uh, moved into this, uh, this role mm. working on the Dante project. Uh, and now GCX. Mm, gotcha. And I mean, you were saying, uh, I mean, it might have been that you wanted to potentially take a break, but as these things happen, the opportunities just come knocking at your doorstep. And, and it's again, that sort of dissection of, oh, well, what is this opportunity? Do I want to pursue it? And, and clearly you're in a position now where you've seen some decent value in it and you want to sort of go along with this project. So, I mean, your incoming role now, I mean, what was your main attraction to taking on this new position? Uh, I mean, what was going through your mind and, and why did it jump out to you as I want to take on this this role? Yeah, sure. Well, I, yeah, I was kind of going to take a break, but the timing of this project, you know, landing in my lap was mm. impeccable. And I, I just... I'm not just going to work on any projects. I need to be really passionate about it, need to really see potential for a major discovery, scale, materiality. And that's what I believed and saw pretty quickly that this project had. You know, you can see just down the road uh, from the project, 15 kilometers to the south is Nebo Babel. And that's the biggest resource development project that no one's ever heard of yeah. uh, in the <laughs> world right now. It's so amazing the people I talk to who are in the resources industry who are not aware that BHP is undertaking a $1.7 billion mine development right now in West Australia mm. and, and how many people haven't heard of it. Uh, but it's a big mine development. It's a magmatic nickel sulfide uh, project. It's going to produce 25 
odd thousand tonnes of nickel in concentrate per annum and 25,000 tonnes of copper in concentrate per annum mm. uh, every year for 25 years. So it's elephant country out there. It's producing really big resources. It's underexplored, even though there's that large discovery there, which was discovered by WMC um, 20 plus years ago. Uh, so it's the right kind of geology. It's very exciting. There's, there's lots of very advanced targets on the project. It was clear to see that you know, early on. Uh, if you look at the data set, you know, we've got about 15 to $20 million worth of data that we've inherited on this project. And so when it's not a project which, where you have to go out and do all the soil sampling and you know, spend two years uh, doing geophysics and then doing your native title and heritage, we've got all that data now already. We've got our heritage clearances, the, her the heritage agreement is already mm. in place. Uh, so it's just a project where I could see that you can come in and really hit the ground running and, and really start you know, the, the pointy end of exploration. Uh, and I don't mind the reconnaissance style exploration, the early stage stuff, but this project is more advanced than that. Um, there's a lot of evidence there supporting mineralization and, and, and the metal literally mm. sticks out of the ground on this project. So in a nutshell, all those things together are the, are the reasons why I, I like the project uh, and wanted to get behind it. Gotcha. And I mean, the idea that it's, yeah, one of the, the up and coming projects with, with Rio Tinto, but yet yeah, no one's ever heard of it. Do you have any ideas as to, to why? I mean, there's typically this flavor in the market where everyone's aware of certain areas because of certain materials and what we're mining there, i.e. lithium, um, and everyone gets really excited. But there's so many areas that it almost just transitions quite quickly to we've never heard of it to suddenly we do. But I mean, why has this been potentially flying under the radar? Um, and as you said, so many people in the industry and probably outside wouldn't have ever heard of this this area. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the answer is. Uh, it was it was owned by so WMC discovered the deposit mm. uh, about 25 years ago, and then it was spun out to Cassini uh, Minerals. So sorry, BHP bought out WMC. Cassini was spun out of that, and they picked up Nebo Babel and they drilled it out, and then Cassini sold it to Oz Minerals, mm. who then sold it to BHP just recently, November last uh, sorry November last year. Oz Minerals uh, announced their final investment decision on taking Nebo Babel Light mm. uh, and then subsequently BHP bought out Oz Minerals and that was part of it. So I don't know if it's kind of been, it's just kind just of lost, lost along the trail mix in, yeah, yeah. in that process. Um, but I mean, the it's a big bag money deposit and the, and the nickel, the nickel's going through, plan to go through BHP's Nickel West as part mm. of the nickel expansion and the copper um, in concentrate is a substantial amount of copper also being produced. So we have targets in the same geology as that project. So we've got large magmatic nickel, copper and PGE targets. And we've also got these large uh, plat. So when I say PGE, I mean platinum group elements, platinum, palladium and gold together. Uh, we've also got these really large uh, PGE reefs, which stick out of the ground. You know, I'm talking, we've got 25 kilometers of outcropping reef, oh, far averaging out. okay. over a gram per ton, um, platinum, palladium and gold consistently. That's a pretty compelling target. Mm. So I've, I've spoken to some people who uh, ran reef projects in uh, the Bushveld in South Africa. Uh, you know, 2.2 billion ounces of uh, platinum, palladium and gold is estimated to be in the Bushveld. And, and some of those guys use the word colossal uh, to describe our reef targets. Mm. But the geology is such that we also have these big magmatic nickel copper targets. So that's the exciting opportunity there. It's the scale, the size of the targets, and the fact that we've got the nickel, copper, and also these big PG reefs there, okay. uh, both in gotcha. the same project. And you were saying as well about some of the, I guess, all the work already being done, and that might have been, I guess, a testament to the previous owners that have done a lot of work but never really progressed it. So you highlighted a lot of the work that's already been done, and I can imagine you just said it means you can just go on and execute straight away. So having all those in in pretty much sorted and ticked off. I mean, what's really the game plan now to really execute and, and as you said, get on the ground and start doing stuff? Yeah, so I mean, big, big focus <laughs> on ensuring that land access is is uh, clear. So, I mean, we've, we've spent, uh, we've invested in land access and, and heritage. We've been out and done our initial heritage surveys. Uh, it's all gone very well. So ticking, ticking that box, then putting our, we already know, you know, several locations we're interested in wanting to drill. So getting our drilling approvals is really the next stage mm -hmm. for us. Uh, like I said, we've got 15 to $20 million worth of data. We're processing that at the moment. You know, it's, um, it is such a substantial data set and there's so much value to be extracted from that. So we're working and collaborating with some of the world's very best consultants in their independent fields 
um, you know, and, and they are helping us work through our data set and extract all the value out of it uh, to make sure that we're, you know, because we have so much prospectivity and so many mm. targets, you know, it's important to make sure that we're spending our time and money on the highest, most highly ranked targets uh, within the project. And so we believe we've, we, we're, you know, we've prioritized our uh, initial target areas very well, but I'm also very confident that we're going to yield many more new targets from this ongoing review of the data mm. uh, that, that we're working through at the moment. And you mentioned that, again, it's a really sort of growing area as well in that surrounding region. Uh, and that means that there's clearly going to be infrastructure and greater accessibility built into it. So, I mean, you mentioned Rio Tinto in that area. Um, it's BHP. BHP. Sorry, oh, BHP. apologies. Apologies. Okay. That's that's me getting confused with all the big miners. So BHP is in the area and they've got a big project up and coming. And naturally, they're, you said they've got to have their checkbook ready to go. But I mean, in that vast area, uh, there's going to be a fair bit of infrastructure going in. So are there any other notable... Uh, I guess developments in that area that's quite exciting um, given that I mean BHP is big enough but are there others as well that are acting in that area that's yeah. really a draw card well just just on BHP it's a 1.7 billion dollar mine development right so mm. it's a lot of infrastructure the mine's going to be built in two years uh, in a two-year period we're already six months in there's an airstrip going in it's about six months away it's a sealed airstrip capable of taking much larger aircraft than mm -hmm. uh, than what's currently able to, to fly in. By the way, the airstrip out there is on our tenement. So we have, uh, there's, there's a local town on our project, also an airstrip. So all of the BHP staff and everyone who's working on the mine are flying into our, uh, onto an airstrip on our tenement at the moment. So we've already got, you know, some great accessibility there and, and, and the town, you know, accommodation, things like that. Uh, but the, the infrastructure that Nebo Babel brings to the region is, is going to change that region and totally unlock it, mm. you know, for, for other companies like us to come in. It's a perfect time for us to be bringing this project to market. Um, and people realize now that although the region historically may have been considered quite remote, um, that kind of goes away when all of this infrastructure comes in. And in terms of other projects which are being developed uh, in the area, there is a, another nickel resource being developed uh, not far from us and Nebo Babel. So that's Wingelina. Mm. Uh, that's about 40 kilometers uh, to the east uh, along the border of West Australia and, and uh, Northern Territory. And there's also some other major deposits which are not yet, which are owned by BHB, such as Sukuth, which is 160 million tons at 0.6% uh, copper. That's not yet in the um, mine plan for the Nebo Babel development, but I would be surprised if that did not come into the fold uh, in, in, you know, in the near future. And uh, I believe that exploration, I think Oz Minerals uh, were not undertaking much exploration for the last eight, 10 years while they kind of shored up the mine uh, plan and got all their approvals in place. But now I think that there's a lot of targets sitting there that are probably going to start being tested in, the, I, I'm imagining, uh, mm. once, the, once the mine development's kind of well underway. I'd, I imagine there's going to be new discoveries made kind of between our ground and, and BHP in the near future because our project's actually landlocked by, by BHP ground and uh, the other large companies in the region are Rio Tinto. So we've got BHP, Rio Tinto. Uh, there's also Cobalt Mining out there, have a lot of ground around us. So Cobalt is Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates' uh, oh. artificial intelligence exploration company that they're backing. So they use supercomputers to kind of plug data in and it kind of tells, you know, it spits out where they think the greatest potential for large copper, uh, nickel and cobalt deposits are. Mm -hmm. We didn't need a computer, you know, we're, um, we're geologists. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Yep. Nebo Babel's there, 400 million tonne deposit. Uh, it's pretty clear that there's uh, nickel and copper potential in the area. But anyway, that their, uh, their AI has also highlighted the West Musgrave as the key area that they've taken a large position in. So, you know, it's, there's big... It's, it's big company territory, elephant country, um, big, big CL targets mm. and, and, the, and targets which, you know, if successful have the potential to, you know, have long mine life, um, long mine life discoveries, just like Nebo Babel. And we're facing that, uh, I guess, looming decision point and we're seeing it across the board whereby, yeah, these underexplored areas uh, are now having to be reassessed and reevaluated because mine lives have been 
exhausted from, uh, again, just years of using it and a lack of investment into bringing new ones online. And that's, you know, when you say, oh, this area hasn't necessarily been tapped into, well, that's, that's almost the obvious. That's where we're going to have to start exploring to start bringing in new resources. And then it goes from, you know, never heard of to suddenly the next big, big thing. And that's the great sort of transition period we're, we're facing now. And it's gives a lot of excitement and and yourself coming into the role i mean there's going to be a lot of well decisions and a lot of processes being uh coming in and, and really having fun i could say with this new project that you've got your hands on i mean what do you what's going through your brain in regards to really well getting everything up and running and sorting it and the, and the milestones that you're sort of aiming to have accomplished what's what's sort of going through your mind with all of that i'm just excited to get out there and start drilling you know we we're, we're pretty clear on what we need to do um Everything's running on schedule or ahead of schedule. Mm. And uh, we just want to, you know, we're relatively aggressive in our approach to how we explore. Um, small companies are tasked with making the big discoveries now. Most of the discoveries are made by small companies, uh, junior companies. Uh, and we kind of bring that kind of aggression to the to testing these targets that haven't, hasn't really been applied in the past. You know, the historical explorers did excellent work and they collected fantastic data sets. Uh, but they had some issues with access to capital, uh, which meant that they weren't able to finally test some of the targets uh, that they had built. And, uh, and, and other companies uh, had the ground or they made a discovery nearby and ran away uh, to go and chase the discovery that was made. And for, for those reasons, some of the, or many of the targets on our ground uh, fell by the, you know, got, got kind of overlooked for, for a period. But we're coming in with a laser focus and we're going to really invest time, money and energy into this into this project and aggressively explore it. Mm. Um, you know, we're working as fast as possible toward drilling and I'm just excited to, you know, see the drill bit hit the ground and, and kind of start, you know, getting some... Um, yeah, getting some runs on the board, I guess. Mm. And I, I think that's a reflection of, as I said, your, your LinkedIn presence is that I'd, I'd seen you're, you're quite, uh, again, as all geos are, you want to be out there on the ground and really being in the, the thick of it and being there when it's all unfolding. But within the, the projects that you've got, you've got other, I guess, tenements and, and projects within the whole sphere. And this is actually the, the priority. But what else is, uh, I guess, within the GCX portfolio of projects? And, and what, are, what are some of the other, I guess, notable um, decisions or, or ideas going through your mind with, with some of those ones maybe not being as a priority now given that this one's got such a great potential to, to unfold yeah well the other uh, other core project in the portfolio is the Onslow iron oxide copper gold project so we call it IOCG mm. uh, and, and we are we do have some compelling uh, targets there at Onslow it's very underexplored um, so you know I mean really our goal as a company is to is to make discoveries critical metals you know we're, we're building a portfolio of critical metal uh, assets that we believe have a potential to, to host tier one critical metal deposits. Um, and those metals are anything required for the, the green energy transition, electrification uh, and stuff like and decarbonization. Mm. So so these are, this is the kind of portfolio we're putting together and, and uh, our projects have different levels of uh, development and the targets have different levels of, of, of their advancement. And at Onslow Project, there really hasn't been much historical exploration. So it's kind of quite frontier in that sense mm. where, where we're coming in and doing some um, grassroots exploration there, uh, which has yielded a, a series of IOCG targets. The government uh, has given us uh, 200,000 of, of government funding to go and drill those. And we intend to drill those this year. So there'll be three targets drilled there. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're excited to test them. No one's ever drilled uh, deep holes in that area before. Uh, and that that you know that'll be coming on uh, probably next month. Mm, gotcha. And that's a nice point there about the the government support because you'd say naturally there's been this real almost anti mining. But when you look at everything in in the world that we use, it's all a product of some form of mining. I think that's the the reality of what a lot of people sometimes struggle to come to. I guess the decision with, but the, the government support and almost local communities is probably also very valuable and, and important. And you touched on with the, the current, the, the flagship that you've got a fair bit of support and, and I guess traditional owners on board. Uh, I mean, what has that sort of partnership and development been across the board? And uh, in your position now, you're you're having to well again meet up with everyone and have those discussions. But what, what's going through those um, talking points? And, and I mean, how supportive are they in in regards to having you in those areas? Yeah, well, they've, they've been very supportive, and I think it's because of our approach. You know, we our goal is to discover and develop resources in a way which benefit benefits all of our mm. stakeholders. And you know, a big part of that, a key stakeholder for us is local Aboriginal communities. So, at whatever stage our project is, we try and 
make sure that our project is yielding, bene yielding benefits to the local Aboriginal communities as much as possible. And we do that in a way which is appropriate for the size and stage of mm. advancement of the project. Obviously, as an early stage exploration project, you can only do so much. Um, and then as things progress, if you make discoveries and, uh, and more resources come in uh, to the company as a result of those, you can start doing more, creating not just employment, but business development opportunities. And this is part of something that uh, we focus on and I focus on and very passionate about. Uh, we've built a team of, of people who are highly experienced in this. Uh, we've got Will Alston working on our team. Uh, he spent 20 years with Fortescue Metals uh, doing a lot of their um, stakeholder engagement community uh, relations. Mm. And, and he's working with us out there at the moment, uh, helping us build strategies and, and connect with the community and, and work in a very positive way. And, and I'm very pleased with, with how it's been going. And um, I'm very pleased with the level of support we've got from the local community out there and uh, and, and also at Onslow Project. And, and I mean, stepping back, uh, I'd just be interested to know, given your time within the mining industry, uh, this current phase, you could say, of, of exploration is, as you said, quite exciting because there's this real drive. But have you ever really experienced almost this urgency from either governments or local communities or even car manufacturers for uh, you know, renewable materials or sustainable materials to have this urgency to make all these uncoverings? I mean, throughout your time, have you seen these ups and downs? But is this anything, is this quite different to anything you've ever experienced before? It is different. The whole, you know, green energy transition is, is, is still new. Mm. And, and the, the kind of momentum that's behind that and the government support and drive that's behind that and the investors' interest in that is completely changing the game, I think, at yeah. the moment. So... Yeah, and, and there is a sense of urgency to bring these resources forward because of the shortfalls that are, you know, uh, predicted several key commodities over the next kind of 10 years as, as um, the electric revolution kind of... Mm, yeah, it takes fold and takes everyone fold. wants it, yep. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, you've, obviously we've got lithium and we've got copper and nickel are very important for the green energy transition. But even if we go to you know, something like platinum group elements, I mean, they're super important... Uh, for the environment because they take the toxic fumes out of uh, out of hydrocarbon vehicles. Mm. So carbon monoxide, things like that. And what people are failing to recognize at the moment is that electric vehicles aren't going to replace hydrocarbon vehicles tomorrow. It's going to take decades for yep. this, uh, to roll out. So these metals such as you know, the platinum and palladiums as well as the nickel, copper and the lithiums are also very important uh, for the environment and so are also critical metals that fall into the you know, the, um, the vision for, for what we think are, are important. Mm. And I know from a, it's easy to get sucked into we're based in WA, there's a lot of tailwinds and incentives here. But when you're looking at the big picture almost from, you know, federal government in Australia, but also, you know, we always look at the Europe or, or the Inflation Reduction Act in the US as, as tailwinds and incentives. I mean, it's hard to sort of imagine, imagine yourself, you know, 15 years down the track as to where it is and, and making a discovery is probably the, the priority of it. But I mean, where can you really see GCX potentially ongoing? And, uh, and I mean, I hate to put words in your mouth, but given the area where your uh, flagship project is, you, you potentially got, you know, a big, big play with a big checkbook just really surrounding you. Um, that's always given the almost the stage that we're in at the markets where there's always companies looking to absorb smaller tier projects and in-house them. There's all those sorts of ideas and, and I guess potentials on the horizon or where do you really see the, the sole focus being as the company delivers on this, these projects? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make the logical decision at the time, mm. you know, that's going to yield the best results for our shareholders and, and stakeholders mm. you know, based on, based on what it is that we, that we uncover that, mm. to, to use your word. Yeah. Um, so, there's, there's no one single strategy in how, how these things can play out, these resources plays. Mm. It does does depend on the size and scale of discovery and, and how things progress. But one of the key things that is really great about GCX is the shareholder base it has. You know, we have Tribeca Investment Partners are a major shareholder. They have about 20% of the company. Uh, they're, they're very experienced in backing resource plays all the way through to development. So we've also got other large uh, institutions like Australian Super Fund, mm -hmm. uh, major shareholder of GCX. Uh, and several other groups so we've got a register that not many juniors would have yeah and what that does is kind of i suppose supports you support, quite a fair bit supports us a lot with access to capital you know over over the process from discovery to resource development um, at a point which you would be looking for you know potential a potential mm. exit to you know to a, to a major if, if that was the chosen path and i mean they're they're i guess 
interest in yourselves is probably a, a testament to the, the projects and the potential there as well. But uh, within the team and, and yourself, I mean, who else is, is involved in GCX Metals that's potentially giving the, the tick of approval for these companies? Because we know that or a lot of these investors, they look at the team, the resource, but almost that the people on board and the company is almost a real key distinguishing feature as to what they've previously done. So who else is surrounding you in this new position? Yeah, so the, the project, so when, when the Dante project has been vended into mm. uh, GCX, it's undergone a very high level of due diligence. Uh, and so GCX has um, uh, deep connections with the Apollo Group, who are a very you know, well-renowned kind of uh, group, technically and commercially, in, in resor- resource plays, Australia and globally. And the project has been uh, you know, reviewed and had due diligence undertaken by Apollo Group, but also uh, by Tribeca, who have their own analysts who, who have looked over. And obviously, there's two Tribeca um, directors on the board, mm-hmm. Hayden, Hayden Smith and Ben Cleary. Um, so it's obviously gone through that process yep. to, to get to where it is now and, and to be um, vended into the, the GCX uh, company. Okay. And when we're saying this is all, again, a reflection, it might be my naivety of saying when this all sort of starts unfolding. I mean, what sort of timeline are we looking at to really start, uh, I guess, seeing this this restructure? Has that potentially already happened? Um, not sure what you mean by restructure. Oh, yeah. Well, as, in, as in bringing the, the project and this new alignment, or is that, again, my, my naivety of not potentially understanding that this is already up and running? Oh, no. So, I mean, the project is up and running. Yes. We, we, yeah. I mean, privately had a significant investment over the last six months into, mm. into the project. You know, we're doing the heritage surveys where we're doing um, reconnaissance programs. We're working on reprocessing all the geophysics. We're putting, you know, getting our drill up, like, applications ready. Mm. And uh, working toward you know a drill program as fast as possible. Uh, obviously, the the project acquisition still needs to go to a shareholder vote. Yes. Um, which which will happen this year. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and as as a result of that, I'll, I will come in. You know, not just as incoming, but as actual yep. uh, CEO and, and MD uh, of GCX. So to take it in its portfolio of projects, not just Dante projects. Yes. Forward. Yeah, I think that was what I was trying to sort of understand is what we're saying. It's happening. It's more about like, yeah, when and it's all it's all happening at the same time, but more about so that everyone's, I guess, familiar with where when you transition from, you know, uh, incoming to, to currently now, yeah. the operating, uh, I guess, would be the, the, the proper term. But I mean, following the, the GCX medals, I guess, news flow, because there'll be a fair bit coming out. I mean, where can listeners and investors go to keep on top of it all and, and potentially follow yeah, some of the updates, the drill results and I guess progress updates from the company? Well, uh, the normal channels, I suppose, mm. you know, you can, you can go to the ASX, you can go to the GCX uh, Metals website, um, you can look at any of the reputable uh, kind of uh, news uh, media uh, groups. That, distribution that, 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 parties. Yeah, 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 yep. that, that, are, that, that are reporting on, um, you know, exciting exploration plays. So um, I won't list them all, but yeah, you know, <laughs> if you search it up, research. yeah, Google or whatever browser you're using, you're going to find it. And uh, I'm sure if people want to reach out and contact, there, there's emails and, and yourself. Uh, if investors yes, if are looking want to, to get yeah. onto our mailing list, um, yeah. you know, you can email. Uh, so we're, we've got our investor relations group. Uh, I can provide the email if you want to pop it up mm-hmm. on the screen on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put that up so we've got an idea of that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then we've got our info at uh, gcxmetals.com.au uh, email as well. Okay, fantastic. So there's a there's going to be a fair bit coming, and I mean, if you could really highlight almost the the top three or maybe the top five priorities or what you can expect over the next twelve months, given there's probably be a few things that change before then. But what can really investors expect uh, in the news flow or from results over the next twelve months? Sure. So investors can expect to see uh, new targets, exciting targets defined from the review of our extensive historical data set, uh, a drill program uh, commencing. Uh, as soon as we get our approvals uh, and then draw results and, and, and follow up plans. Uh, there's also going to be several geophysical programs that will happen in between that. But I mean, people are excited about drilling mm. and that's what we're working toward as fast as possible. Uh, and, and that'll be happening as soon as we get our approvals. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you, you taking the time. The way, mm. Sorry, I just want to say that when we drill, we'll be drilling several targets uh, in our first program, not just one. So ah. uh, it's going to be, like I said, we're, we're, we're aggressive in our approach of uh, exploration and discovery. And, you know, we're going to, t- we're going to test uh, both magmatic nickel copper targets and, and PGE reef targets. In, in the same program. Okay. Yeah. So that, as you said, an aggressive, but again, you've, you've definitely got an incentive and a drive to, to really get well, in the ground as, as exploration companies really want to do. And it's probably been a, a theme of, well, yourself in the past of what you've done and, and now clearly the, the urgency to make the 
freeze. But yeah, there will be a lot coming. And I appreciate you taking the time um, to speak on the show because I know you're constantly either out there on the field or, or all around the place. So it's glad that I managed to sit down with you in the room. But yeah, thank you so much, Tom, for speaking on the show today. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate your time also. Thanks for listening to the Market Bull Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow The Market Bull on our socials at Twitter and LinkedIn by searching The Market Bull. You can also subscribe to our newsletter on the website by visiting www.themarketbull.com.au.